Hello, my name is BJ Paris. Welcome to Tapping Into His Treasures. How is everybody? I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing well. Well, there certainly is a lot of stuff going on in the world, with all the, in the country rather. World too, but the country with all the protesters and the cities being destroyed. There was ever a time to pray. It's now. I had been doing pretty well with the quarantine. But yesterday it really hit me. Maybe, maybe you're going through the same thing. But just the being in quarantine for three months and not really talking to anybody outside of the um, computer, you know, Facebook and telephone. Um, but I'm just starting to need those hugs from my family, especially the little girls. And it just all crept up on me yesterday with the homesickness. And the worst thing I could have done, I did. And that was to watch, uh, you know, the Saturday afternoon public TV stations with the music. The old, the Engelberg, Engelbert, Humperdinck, and the Dean Martin, and all those guys. And um, they're all our, my age now, and they're all singing as, you know, elderly seniors, elderly people. And it, it just brought me to tears. I ended up bawling like a baby. And... Even after I turned off the TV, I couldn't stop crying all day. But the good thing about it was, it was like a catharsis. And once I was done crying, I felt brand new. So it was good. And for any of you out there who are going through the same thing and need to shed a few tears, I am praying for you. Get it out of your system. So our theme today is you can't outgive God. Would you agree? Give me an amen if you agree. So, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet or give out, M-E-T-E, -E, it shall be measured to you again. So, um, I forgot to get my Bible, but I'm going to give you a couple of testimonies first and then I'll go get the Bible. I want to read something from it. So, in going with, along with our theme, uh, just a couple of days ago, maybe two days or maybe three days, um, I gave somebody a hundred dollars um, because I finally received my stimulus from the government. And the person was without a car and everything, and she finally had somebody with a second-hand car of like 150 miles or 149,000 miles on it. And uh, the woman said she'd give it to her for a hundred, and she was so desperate that I gave it to her. So, what do you suppose happened? The next day, I received two hundred dollars. So, that's the way God does things, and it's not only with money; it's you know with time. I have found in my past, that if I give time to somebody or to the work of the Lord, He will stretch my time and give it back to me. How, I don't know how many times that has happened. Maybe it's happened to you too. You know, like if I needed to uh, uh, really press one day and uh, put hours in to get a show done, he may let me get the show done in five hours instead of 15 hours. He does that supernaturally. It's, it's incredible how he does that. So the other testimony I want to share, I gave a long time ago about uh, getting it right back and not... not you can't outgive God, and He does give it right back. And my testimony uh, happened. I was living in Baltimore at the time. I'm trying to think what year it was. It had to be maybe around 17, 18 years ago. So I had my mother with me because my sister and I would alternate taking her two months at a time. And we went to the grocery store, and uh, we were leaving to go out. And you know how the guys are women too on the side of the road with the signs asking or begging for money or food or whatever. Well there was the man, man there on the right hand side and either he had one leg or he was on crutches or he was disabled. And he was on the right hand side of the road and there were two lanes and I was on the left lane and I gave my mother a dollar to try to give it to him, but we couldn't because 
red light turned green. So I had to go because there were cars in back of me. So I went through the light, I took a left, I went about a mile or so up the road, the busy road. And I just, I just had to go back. I just, I felt so bad, I just, I couldn't go home. So I turned around onto a side street and turned around and then went back to the market. And then I turned around again and I went out the exit where the guy was standing on the right or sitting. And I gave my mother the dollar, she rolled down the window, and I said, hurry up and give this to him as soon as we go buy him. So she did. So anyway, it was only a dollar, but here's what happened. I left to go home, I was a couple miles away, and I turned off the main road into my parking lot where I lived, and we had such a big yard, because it wasn't only, there wasn't only parking for myself and the people downstairs, uh, there was a tavern on the, the main road that our street went into, and there wasn't enough parking at the tavern for the patrons, so some of those guys used to park in our backyard because it was so big. It was all, I think it was like a commercial property. And so there were always cars there, morning, noon, and night, especially night. Um, and some of them that couldn't drive home at night, maybe they drank too much, they used to leave their cars there overnight and come back. Somebody would drive them back the next day to get them. Anyway, that was what it looked like in the, in the backyard. So anyway, it was a very windy day that day. And uh, as, I was, as I parked the car, I was walking from my car to my back door to unlock it, to go in. And the wind actually blew a $1 bill right at me. Here it is coming in the wind and blah, boom, it hits me right here. <laughs> I kid you not. I didn't even have to stoop down on the ground to pick up the dollar bill. It came right here to me. And to me, it was like, that tells you that God's got a sense of humor, but it also tells you that you get it back. <laughs> so that's kind of my favorite testimony about that. So... My mother thought I was crazy. <laughs> so, so just give me a second here. Okay. So the Bible teaches us that there is joy in giving. And there is. I'm still laughing about it all these years later. So believe me, there's joy in giving. So often, when people are asked to give money, they react as if they were having teeth pulled, Right? or as if they are being asked for a treasure that they don't want to part with, they want to hold on uh, to for dear life. And I know the feeling, because I've done that. I've had to give up things that I wanted to hold on to. And think of this, once you, once you release it, that's the hard part, and then you're over it. So, for another for instance, when my phone rings at 8 o'clock in the morning, which these uh, uh, people selling things are collecting donations, they, they have it down to a T when to call so that you're going to be home, da da da, da you know? So, uh, yeah, and this happens frequently. When it rings at 8 o'clock in the morning and someone is asking for a donation for the police or firemen or veterans, which I have no problem donating to, but my first thought is my pocketbook. You know, like if it was the end of the month, I wouldn't have the $10 to donate. But anyway... What comes back after the initial thought of pocketbook, what comes to mind, is the groups that are protecting me and my family and guaranteeing us safety and they protect us, you know, and keep us safe. And in thinking that way, it's so much easier to send a donation, for goodness sakes. I mean, think about it. God doesn't want us to give, uh, He doesn't want us to cringe when he, he asks us to give. He teaches us in his word that giving is a joy and that we should be blessed by giving. Giving doesn't have to involve money. It may involve something material or services, serving somebody in one capacity or the other, or time, giving time. I have an elderly neighbor who brings cooked lobsters to several of us neighbors twice a year, once for the new year and once 
probably in the summertime. And I can tell you, I just love receiving them. All that I have to do is melt some butter and grab a nutcracker and a bib and I'm one happy camper. And so are the other gals. Sometimes she brings a dessert and it fills her with so much joy to do this. And it fills me with joy to take something to her. It does indeed. Some well-off people may give something bigger than a lobster or a dessert. So some may give a car away or make a large donation to a medical facility or a public TV station. Many Jewish people believe that they absolutely must give to causes or else what they have will be taken away from them or there will be a halt to what they have coming in. And I used to work for people uh, down in Baltimore where there's a large Jewish community. I used to work for people who would actually have me write the checks out for them, uh, seniors, you know. And they taught me a lot. I just thought that was so interesting. So God may lead someone to take someone a bag of groceries. It doesn't have to be a large donation. A bag of groceries. Um, a gallon of milk if they have kids. Specifically in this pandemic. Something like that would be greatly appreciated during the pandemic. When, you know, people aren't getting their regular paychecks and things like that. So not everyone can give money away, but most everyone can give time. Christians should give God time by investing in others, especially new Christians. They should spend time praying for suffering and persecuted Christians too. That's giving. They should give God time by including Him in their day. How would we like it if God only paid attention to us one morning a week, let's say Sunday morning. One way of giving him time is to share the gospel with others. You know, stop and think about that. Here we are with our schedules. Our family's here. We've got to plan what we're having for a meal that day, that evening. Um, people are going to school, married people, grandmothers are going to college these days. Our schedules are full. Full, full, full. So we shouldn't have to squeeze God into that schedule. Give him a minute here or a minute there. Or only pray when we're driving in the car, which a lot of people do, which is good. But uh, what about when we get up in the morning? Set the alarm clock a half an hour early so that we could pray before we go to work. Pray before we shower, for that matter. Um, there's so many ways. Where was that with that? Okay, so if, if we're afraid to talk about the gospel to other people, fear of rejection or self-conscious or whatever it is, uh, we shouldn't let that hinder us. Because Jesus, Jesus and God, they love when we tremble. They do get blessed when we tremble. And they get glory from it, trust me. So if anyone is extremely nervous about uh, starting off a conversation, don't start off with uh, having to share for 10 minutes on, on the book of Matthew or anything like that. Start off with a sentence and get yourself like into the groove of sharing. God could take one sentence that you give to somebody and make that person think about it. He could perhaps bring it back every afternoon to the, to the hearer. And then later, maybe you'd feel better with a couple of sentences, or two or three, you know? And uh, it doesn't have to be a big chore and scare you half to death, for sure. One sentence is better than no sentence, would you agree? And the Holy Spirit can use that one sentence more than you realize. So consider, in giving here, Consider the thousands of teachers that buy supplies for their students out of their own means as there isn't enough in the school's budget to buy all the necessary supplies. That's a wonderful gift of giving. And consider how the teacher's job is not done when the school bell rings. The thought is coming to me now fresh. Consider how the teacher's job Teachers' jobs 
are not coming when the school bell rings at the end of the school day, but they stay up to all hours of the night, sometimes, to prepare their lessons for the following day. That's giving, because they've been given not only a job, but a vocation. That's giving to each one of those students. And consider how they squeeze room in their already full schedule to help a student that needs help after school, all the while having a list of errands that he or she has to accomplish before heading home to cook supper. These things are wonderful gifts of time, and they all do it. All teachers do that. So thank you, teachers. And, you know, we could say the same for nurses or anybody else who has a vocation. They are giving beyond the Big Brothers and Big Sisters organization. Those individuals are giving, taking uh, just some time to be with a young teen or a preteen, taking a walk in the park with them, or just hanging out and listening. They're doing a wonderful work, and thank you guys for giving as well. The greatest acts of giving is giving to God in the form of a tithe or offering at church. Many believe in tithing 10%, and many don't believe in it. In any case, the Bible does say that the first fruits belong to the Lord. I remember hearing many years ago that if we don't, I want you to listen to this. I heard this years ago. I'm not saying it's biblical or misinterpreted. I'm just telling you what I heard years ago, and you could just take it and pray about it and do whatever you think, however you think God is leading you. So I, here's what I remember hearing, that if we don't give to God what is His, then sometime in our lifetime, He will get it from us in one way or another. So, you know, when some people get up there in their 50s or, you know, past their middle age, and all of a sudden they're losing money, maybe that's why it's happening. I don't know. It's just something each individual should pray about. Maybe you need to get right with God in that area, or uh, at least do something that you've never done before and give an offering, however God leads. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know, I don't know whether that's true or not. So in any case, listen to this important statement. God doesn't need our money. I'll repeat that. God does not need our money. He just wants to know if we're obedient. I know for a fact that that initial twinge when you go to give, that twinge, it passes. When you start to do it on a regular basis, it passes. And it will be replaced with great joy. And I also know for a fact that when we continuously give through the years, that it becomes our nature. And even if we never received anything in return, it wouldn't matter. It's just such a great gift. It enlarges our soul. Consider the shoebox ministry, which takes place every year at Christmas time by the Franklin Graham Ministry. Imagine the delight on the faces of the thousands of kids that receive those shoeboxes. There are just small items in each shoebox, yet the kid the, the kids, they hug them to their chests in sheer delight when they receive them. I mean, it may be something from the 5 and 10, something for 80 or 90 cents, and they're filled with joy over it. It's just beautiful to watch. When we give to respond to his asking us to, he is blessed, God is blessed, and our soul is enlarged. Proverbs 11, 24 to 25 one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Good proverb. Matthew 6, 3 to 4. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And God does like it much better when we don't... I, I've heard people very close to me in the past uh, 
if somebody gave them something, they would, in front of me, I would overhear this, they would say to the person remarking on, oh, what a nice thing they, they gave you that, or that's a nice thing they did for you. And the person would pipe up and say, oh, yeah, but you don't know how much I gave them. That's not blessing the Father. <laughs> I hate to tell you, it's not blessing the Father. Okay, so um, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Let me see how I'm doing on time. I wanted to read all of Psalm 148, but I don't think I'm going to have the time. Okay. I wonder if I... No, I don't have time to read it. Because I want to do the Lord's Prayer. Would you do it on your own? Read Psalm 148. It's all about... Um, it's praising God. The psalm is praising God. I'll just tell you briefly. Uh, it talks about the sea monsters praising God. Uh, and that's always been a great verse to me because I remember... Uh, taking our kids there years ago to um, an aquarium, and they would have different things about the sea that they would teach on. And I remember the headphones that we would put on to listen to the whale's song. The whales change their songs every single year. And what they're doing is praising God. And even the whales know enough because of instinct that they don't sing the same song to God every single year in praise to his creation. And they change their tunes. That is so supernatural, it's unbelievable. It just shows you there's a divine creation in play here. So between the God calling for praise, commanding praise from the monsters of the deep, and from the trees of the field, with all their leaves flapping in the wind, especially in their beautiful fall colors, they're praising God. Don't laugh. This is all the divine design. Seriously. So if you would just read Psalm 148 and be blessed by, by the types of praise that God is commanding from the earth, please do it. I wish I had time. Maybe I'll do it next week. So consider how that Jesus gave of himself when he was suffering and dying on the cross. He gave compassion to the thief on the cross next to him and granted him eternal salvation. If that wasn't a gift, I don't know what was. Here the guy is ready to go into eternity and he could have gone directly to hell. And at the very last moment, Jesus offers him the gift of eternal life with the Father in heaven. Doesn't get any better than that. Doesn't get any more wonderful than that. Ultimately, Jesus gave his life for us after he did that to the man next to him. He gave, he suffered, he was tortured. Those nails were four inches long. And they weren't the little skinny thing that you hang a picture on a wall. They were fat. So he gave his life for us. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, giving is all he did in all his 33 years on earth. That's all he did was he gave him of himself to ministering constantly and teaching and praying for his disciples. And he gave through loving. What's better than to receive the gift of God's love? That's how he gave. He loved his mother by honoring and respecting her. He gave his loyalty to the Father above by praying to him before he did anything. He didn't do anything on his own without praying to God. And we should follow his example. Our Heavenly Father gave us the Holy Spirit as a comforter and teacher the moment we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. What a gift. He gave us his only begotten Son, Jesus. So if you want to become a giver and you don't know how to go about it, just pray and ask God to lead you, and he will. Not only will you be blessing God, but you will never be the same. Well, I only have two minutes 
I don't think I have time for the Lord's Prayer. How about if I say it faster than I normally do? Okay, bow your heads with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And just a quick prayer for our viewers. Not that I don't mean it to be quick. It's going to have a lot more meaning than quick but, um, because of time. So for each viewer watching, every single one of you, I command a blessing on. And I have that right at Calvary. We were given the right to command blessings. Because mm -hmm. Jesus is in us and the Holy Spirit is praying through us. So I command a blessing on you, each one. I don't care how old or how young you are or how, if you're a teenager, if you're in between young adult, I don't care. You're all important to God and you all have a purpose in this life. And God loves you. Don't ever forget it. He loves you. So... Please meditate and think about these things uh, on giving throughout the week, okay? Thanks for watching. God bless you. God bless yours. God keep you and God keep yours. Till next time. Bye-bye for now.